Good evening. Climate issues dominate the global agenda, from the Copenhagen conference and its resulting failures to the millions spent encouraging us all to recycle and conserve energy. So when scientists appear to be cavalier with the research, when they have to own up to dodgy science, what are we to do? The UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is meant to be the gold standard. Governments around the world rely on its findings to support policies on climate change. But it has presided over a series of damaging blunders. It said glaciers in the Himalayas could disappear by 2035. Now it admits that was wrong. But there has been a wave of criticism. And today there was more in the infamous hacked email exchange between scientists about climate research. So who are the IPCC? The man in charge of the UN body is Rajendra Pachauri. Its reports are compiled by working groups in four different countries and written by literally thousands of scientists all over the world, all working unpaid on a voluntary basis. So does the system need to be shaken up? Tonight we talk to one of the scientists who says his work has been distorted. And we'll ask a senior figure at the IPCC how and why so much has gone wrong. First, Susan Watts. Almost every day now, fresh and urgent questions are emerging over integrity within the world of climate science. And there's a growing sense that the IPCC, the intergovernmental body that presents that science to the world, is in crisis. It clearly can't just simply go on as business as usual. What matters most uh, is that the work of the IPCC is deemed to be trusted and trustworthy, both by politicians and by the public. Away from the anxious frenzy over how climate science has been conducted, there's quiet contemplation on all sides over what comes next for climate policy when the turmoil subsides. Deep in the Buckinghamshire countryside, a splinter group of climate experts is about to begin a three-day private strategy meeting. They say they're not climate sceptics, but they are disenchanted with the way the world's governments have responded to climate science. They say Kyoto and now Copenhagen have failed. And what's needed is a radical rethink of the whole world of climate science and how it interacts with international politics. Newsnight's been given exclusive access to their meeting. Some of those at the meeting were happy to be identified, others not. The organiser says it's been the IPCC's tendency to present climate science as one truth that's been the most damaging. One part of it is that at Copenhagen there was a failure of a particular sort of diplomatic process. There wasn't an agreement, but also the process itself, I think, was in question. At the same time, there's been the unravelling of a narrative which had presented the story about climate science as though it was somehow a finished thing, that there was a truth on the one side and that there was untruth on the other. But it was never as simple as that. Um, it couldn't possibly be with complex systems. And I think that there's therefore an opportunity to have a much more realistic understanding about what we know and what we don't know uh, about these complex and mysterious systems and to bring that type of knowledge back into a realistic diplomatic and political process. There's been a series of recent scandals over climate science. First, the IPCC was shown to have stated that the Himalayan glaciers would disappear by 2035 without citing peer-reviewed science and based only on a claim to journalists now disputed by the scientist who made it. Then there was the suggestion that 40% of the Amazon rainforest was at risk from decreasing rainfall. The reference was to an environmental group, though in this case peer-reviewed science does at least back up the central claim. There's a dispute, too, over whether the IPCC has overstated the role of climate change in the increasing economic cost of natural disasters. Then today, more serious allegations in the Guardian newspaper that surface temperature data from monitoring stations in China cited by the IPCC may have overstated warming in cities. The allegations concern Phil Jones, the head of the University of East Anglia group, who stepped aside pending an inquiry into emails leaked from the university. The newspaper questions whether he properly took account of whether temperature sensors were measuring real warming or just warming associated with growing cities. The reason today's allegations matter is that they appear to suggest that yet again the IPCC relied on data, the credibility of which is now under question.
We spoke to the former city banker and mathematician who first raised these concerns. It's particularly important because the research is cited and relied upon by the IPCC in its latest assessment report, which was published in 2007. Moreover, the chapter of the assessment report that cites the 1990 research was uh, coordinated by Phil Jones. So Phil Jones has responsibility for what was cited in that chapter. Phil Jones has responded in an interview today saying that his research stands up to scrutiny and is corroborated by more recent work. There are serious allegations and I think that's why the inquiries that are uh, underway at the moment uh, need to run their course uh, and we need to pay very careful attention to, to what those inquiries say. I, I think the, the, the wider issue here, uh, again, that can be turned into, into a positive advantage is for scientists uh, across the areas of climate change research uh, recognizing that openness and transparency with with data and with methods is actually a public good and it will lead to a greater uh, degree of confidence and trust in the science that's done. What we've seen are a few isolated errors in a 3,000 word report. I think the suggestion that somehow the process is broken isn't really the right conclusion. Um, it is clear that many of the people who are leading the criticisms of the IPCC are against it because they don't like the success that it's had in uh, conveying to policymakers and to the public the strength of the evidence on climate change. They're mostly coming from people who oppose action on climate change and they're trying to undermine the organization because they want to undermine the evidence. And I think that the public will see through that tactic. With all these disputes now in play, the risk is that public trust in climate science may at the very least be put on hold. And whatever the outcome could be permanently damaged. There's been a fundamental breakdown of trust. And we as scholars uh, cannot function without trust amongst ourselves and trust in our work. And so. Uh, we're part of an effort to uh, ensure that trust is rebuilt, because without trust we will make no progress. Unless the IPCC takes steps to restore trust fast, it may find it hard to withstand the drip feed of questions over how the science it relies on is carried out, how it weighs up that research, and how prepared the rest of the world is to carry on listening.